home, but God does. God does. And before we start, let's just, let's focus on him. Every weight, let us put it aside. Every burden, let us put it aside and focus on him. God, I thank you, Lord, for another opportunity to be in your house, God. I thank you, Lord, for every individual that is here and the ones that couldn't make it, God. Lord, touch every heart in here, God. Touch every mind. Let our focus be on you, God. Let there be one mind and one accord lifting up your name because that is what it's all about. God, it is all about you, Lord. There is none beside you. There is none greater than you, God. I thank you, Lord, for every time that you have made a way. God, you are good. God, let, you, let, let your presence just fill this room in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name.
come on, nothing. Is it possible? Oh, yes, Lord, I love you, Jesus. Yes, he does. How many believe? He's your healer. How many believe that he can heal everybody on this board up here? This is what the school had put together this week. I said, just leave it right there. We got people in our church that needs a healing. They're home watching, by the way, of, of online today. There's some that's traveling right now. I'm sure they online watching service. Pray God to keep them safe where they're traveling. At. How many believe God can heal everybody on this board tonight? He can give miracles. Now, I want to I change our outlook a little bit. When you pray, you got to believe it's going to be done. You can't pray and say, well, I'm, I'm, still, I'm still messed up. you got to pray and say, you know what? God's got me. I'm all right. I'm going to be all right. God is healing me as I'm praying tonight. God can give an instant miracle. He can do just like that. Sometimes, brother, he has to heal you along the way. But don't think God's not doing a miracle. God is healing tonight. But I want us to bind together for every need that we have in our church. I don't want to call everybody's name. Some of them don't want people to know what they got. And some of them don't have COVID. Some of them have COVID. And if you know, God bless you. God, God bless you and God bless you. But this is the thing. We're going to pray that God can heal that. As sure as God can heal a backache, as sure as God can heal a neck ache, he can take away COVID just like that. It don't take God 10 days to heal COVID. I'm going across the ways today to tell the United States of America it don't take 14 days to, to be quarantined for God. God is a healer. And I don't care what the medical world is saying. God is an instant healer. He can do it. He can do it. My God is the, that kind of God. Let's pray and believe it. God, right now, the name that's above every name. I still believe it. I've been preaching it since I started this thing, and I still believe it tonight. God, that you are a miraculous worker. And God, you are a healer, Lord. And you can touch every need that's on this board, God. You see the names. I read every one of them a moment ago, but I'm, I'm claiming over every one of them again that they're going to be a miracle flow in their lives. They're going to see healing, God. And those that are watching by the way of line tonight that's taking time to tune in live to our service, I pray that you heal their bodies, uh, put breath in their bodies right now. Let them walk by faith, God, and be healed immediately in the name of Jesus. Uh, devil, you are a liar. My God is a miraculous healer. He can deliver. He can bring them through. He can put breath in their bodies. Uh, he can take away coughs and, and flea fevers and broken uh, spirits that they have because that he is a God that can touch where they are tonight. And if you believe it with me, church, would you say in Jesus' name, I believe it to be done in Jesus' name. And also, I rebuke the spirit of fear that they're trying to put on people again. I rebuke that spirit of fear. I'm going to tell you, just, just to get you a little more scared, everybody in this room was probably around somebody this week that's got COVID. There's no way to live in a world and not be around somebody that's got COVID. But I refuse to live in a, in, a, in a bottle, in a barrel or a bubble and have fear in my life because I might have crossed somebody that had COVID. I'm still serving a God that knows all things. Come on, he knows what I've been around. He said, I'll protect you. I'll be go before you. I'll take care of you. And I believe that today. Amen. Brother Hunt, you just ain't been sick yet. Oh, yeah. I just didn't tell y'all. I'm not telling the devil. I'm not telling Facebook. I'm not telling Facebook. I'm sorry. I know I probably should let all y'all know, but no, I haven't had COVID. No, I haven't. I don't guess. But I do get sick, but I don't let the devil know it. I get up and just keep on going. Praise God. Because the devil don't know anything about you until you say, man, I got a headache. Oh, do you? Oh, man, I don't feel. Oh, really? Oh, man, I'm so mad at him. Oh, really? I'm so mad at Pastor. Oh, really? And he, when he finds out, he'll never stop adding on to the mountain. He'll keep piling it up. He'll keep adding on. Oh, Jesus. You know what? But Jesus knows all things. He knows everything. Praise God. God bless you. We're going to get an offering tonight. Ushers will come. And uh, let's get our offering on this Wednesday night. Thank you for ushers for helping out. And Brother Terry is always looking for ushers. So if anybody wants to help him tonight, come on up here and help him out. In the name of Jesus. 
our ushers. We got ushers that are sick tonight that needs a healing in their bodies as well. Praise God. But let's pray for this offering. God, in the name, like I said, it's above every name, Lord. And I am just, I'm crazy enough to believe that, Lord. And I'm going to continue to believe that way. I don't care what people say or try to cross me, Lord. You're still the awesome God. You're still above every God. And you're, you're able to do all things, exceedingly abundantly above all we can think or ask. And tonight, God, we know that you're going to bless this offering, God, and bless those who have, God, and turn around, Lord, and let it go back into their accounts fourfold. I believe you're going to do that in a mighty way. And the church said amen. God bless you. Bring your offering to these young men tonight. God bless
Hallelujah. We love that name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. How many are excited to be at church on a Wednesday night? Oh, I love Wednesday night church. It's just like it's been a long time since Sunday, especially when you fight devils. Amen. How many knows Brother Hunt fights devils every day? And if you're not fighting the devil, it's probably because he's got you. <laughs> he probably, I mean, if he got you, why fight him, right? So uh, I promise you, I, I tell folks that they, they come to me, I say, hey, I promise you, we all fight devils. We all do, every one of us. I think everybody's going to stay in tonight because we thought it was going to be a Wednesday night home group. And uh, so I'm sure some teachers would have to get, go get things together real fast. But I hope you all excuse me for not having home groups. Just got a lot of people that probably shouldn't be together at your home in a tight spot right now. Praise God. Um, but we will get uh, back hopefully next month and get that going. So um, be ready for that. And if anybody's got any extra food you need to get rid of, I'll take it. Praise God. But turn to Numbers chapter 20 if you got your Bibles, Numbers chapter 20, and uh, I'm just going to just take it easy tonight. Is that all right? Y'all believe that, right? Numbers chapter 20, verse number 7. Praise God. Numbers is right after Genesis, in case you didn't know. I mean, Exodus, Genesis, Exodus, then, Gen then Numbers, you're right. I didn't know where it was at either. Praise God, I had it marked, though. Genesis chapter 20, verse number 7. I want to read just about a, four or five verses here, then I'll let you sit down. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, wouldn't it be pretty interesting if we just let God speak more often? And this is pretty awesome. The Lord spoke to Moses and saying, Take the rod and gather thou the assembly together, thou and Aaron thy brother, and speak ye unto the rock before their eyes. Everybody say, he told him to speak to the rock. And it shall give forth his water, and thou shalt bring forth to them water out of the rock. So thou shalt give the congregation and their beasts to drink. And Moses took the rod from before the Lord, and he commanded him. And Moses and Aaron gathered the congregation together before, before the rock. Everybody get around this rock. And he said unto them, Hear now, you rebels. I always want to call people a rebel, and that's what he did that day. He said, Hear me, you rebels. Must we fetch you water out of this rock? And Moses lifted up his hand, and with the rod he smote the rock twice instead of speak. God told him to speak, and the water came out abundantly. And the congregation drank, and their beasts also. And the Lord spake unto Moses and Aaron, Because ye believed me not to sanctify me in the eyes of the children of Israel. Therefore, you shall not bring this congregation into the land which I have given them. Mm. This congregation. You're not going to bring them. You're not going to get to that promised land. And what you said in verse 13, this is the water of, of Meribah, because the children of Israel strove with the Lord and was sanctified in them. And everybody said, in Jesus' name, you can be seated if you promise to take notes and help me preach. Praise God. Hallelujah. You know, I am excited, and I'm so glad that we have live stream video for the purpose of, I've, I have been accused of saying a lot of things from the pulpit, and I go back and watch it, and that's not what I said. And a lot of times we come to church, and we pick out one thing that, that, and we hound on that one thing, that, and we didn't get the whole meaning of it. And that's why I like to read Scripture. When, when I do a Scripture, I like to read a few verses before and a few verses after. But uh, before I put my title up tonight, I want to talk to you about moments in life. How many knows that, that life is really not accumulated, uh, and you don't remember life of years? I mean, uh, that was, of course, last year was a year we'll probably never forget, but there was moments in last year that you'll never forget. Moments in the year before that, you'll never forget. You, you can be 50 years later and still remember a moment that took place. You may not remember that whole year of 1969, but you know a moment that took place in that year. And I know my mom had one of the greatest moments in her life in 1971, December the 20th. 
uh, is when I was born. That was one of the moments she probably never will forget. Every day she looked at me, you know. It's probably never, but those moments we have when our first child is born or our third child, I mean, you'll always remember those moments. And I remember the moment that TJ came out. He had a big old cone head on the side. And I thought, oh, God, put it back. And uh, something's wrong with him. But those moments, you know, you get married and you remember those days. And I did get married before TJ was born, by the way. But that's just, I'm just throwing these out. But, but moments, you always remember life by what moment took place at that instant, at that time. But I don't remember the whole year of 1990, but I remember that day that TJ was born. I don't remember the whole year of 1989 of July and our first year of marriage. And, but I remember a lot of moments of our first year of marriage. I remember a lot of incidences that I can name them after one after another. But the years I can't remember, but moments I can. Moments are something that's always there, and moment makes our lives. And I'm going to talk to you just for a moment about God moments. And let me ask you tonight, just, 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 I'm going to just kind of throw it out at you. When is the last time, I'm, I'm, this is for everybody, okay? I'm, I'm preaching to everybody right now. But when is the last time that you just had a God moment? When's the last time you had that moment that just came straight up on you and you just had a God moment? Are you asking to get them out of my way? Oh, Sister Hunt wants them. Okay, I'm sorry. But if Sister Hunt wants them, you get them to her. But the God moments, how many times do you and I have a moment with God? Just you, I mean, think about it. You ever had that moment, Sister Vivian, and that's my title tonight, God moments, but you ever had that moment driving on the road, it was just you and God? For that moment, and you started crying and speaking in tongues, singing in your car, and, and, and I'll be honest, I don't sing a lot in my car, but I preach to cows, I preach to dogs, I preach to people on the road, and get that car off the road. No, I don't do that, but I, but I, I do preach going down the road, and I, I, I'm just the Lord. I have those moments that God gives me, and, and God moves in my life, and those moments that just keep rolling through my head. But you know what? I feel some, so many times in our lives that we miss and ex we miss the experiences of God moments a lot of times in our life. What, what makes us miss those moments? Right now, if we're not careful, distractions will make us miss that moment. Being in the house of God and be distracted because of what somebody's doing across the way or somebody, uh, whatever it is, we, 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 we have those and we just think about it. We miss those moments because something happened in our mind or something happened in our life. We got sidetracked. But the Bible tonight is filled full of moments that happen, and we preach about them all the time. And, uh, for instance, you know, like Jacob uh, and the dream ladder. Y'all remember that? He dreamed of a ladder descending in and out of heaven. And Jacob, uh, he wrestled with a man. Some believe it's an angel. Some believe it's a God. But he wrestled with him till daybreak. What a moment that had to be in. I mean, think about it. When's the last time you had an all-night prayer meeting and you just couldn't quit praying? When's the last time you just got into the Spirit of God and everybody else left the church, but you just kept praying and you was laid out those moments? And that's what Jacob had an all-night prayer meeting, pretty much wrestling with an angel. And, and then here Moses had a moment standing by a bush that caught on fire but was not being consumed. And, and a voice came out of it that was God and said, Take your shoes off for the ground you're on is holy ground. And, you know, th those moments had to be such an awesome time, you know, when Paul was on the road to Damascus. And he, saw, he was blinded by the light and go to see Ananias. Then, of course, Jesus baptized by John. And that was a great moment, I believe, more for John than it was for Jesus. John saw, the, saw him coming. You know, he said, look who's coming. John on the Isle of Patmos, and he was there in pain. But could, did you know the moment that he had when he began to have the revelation that you and I read today out of Revelations, and he saw all that he saw, the, the moment of just, I'm going to tell you guys, I want to have those moments. I would love to have a moment, and I, I, and I listen to these people that, that have written books and gotten rich because they died and went to heaven, and, and somebody asked me when I had my wreck, they said that they had to bring me back to life again and, and keep me my heart beating and said, hey, did you see heaven? I said, man, no, because if I saw it, I probably wouldn't want to come back. That's just my thought of it. I mean, I just don't know. I, I ain't never saw heaven, but then I, just that moment of time, John saw it. John described it, and Peter and James, you know, even they was there at the Mount Transfiguration. Could you imagine just seeing these kind of things, having those moments in your life? Have you ever had an exciting moment like these in, God, in your life? I mean, think about it. Could you imagine, Brother White, next two or three days, if you and I just decide to get out of the boat and walk on the water? Wouldn't that be a pretty awesome moment? Peter had that day. 
Peter just stepped out on the waves, and they were bigger than two-foot waves, and he began to walk. But now, I'm going to have to know it's Jesus out there telling me to come on. I'm going to be honest with you. But all of these are moments that just happen throughout the Scripture. And then you jump over into Exodus chapter 33. And you put, did I give you that tonight, 33? No, I didn't. We won't read that. That's, that was a long reading, but I will the next Exodus. But if you, if you write it down, read it later. Moses experienced here a God moment as well. He was told, if you, you know, if you don't go with us, he told God, he says, if you don't go with me, I don't want to go. But he was in a moment of a conversation with God. It says, We're, we'll go, God, but if you don't go with us, then we don't want to go. I don't want to go without what I feel right now. And church, that's why when I come to church here, I, sometimes I don't want to leave because I don't want to go to 312 Quinn Road if God's not going with me. You see, there's, there, just so you know, when I get into my castle, my house that I live in, when I get in that place, it's amazing the, the anointing and the peace that we feel in that house. It is. You know why? Because I take the same moment, God, that I have here, that moment, and I take him home with me. I let him ride in my car with me. Somebody told me one time, Brother Hunt, man, you, you're just, you, you drive crazy. I said, but God rides with me. And they said, if I was him, I'd get out. But, but God's everywhere with me. I take him everywhere with me. He's, he's always in my life, always in my heart. So he told God, if you don't go, we don't want to go. So God showed Moses his glory in that moment of Exodus chapter 33 and 12 through 33. He showed his glory. And church, I'm going to tell you tonight, I really feel God is looking tonight to show us his glory. I believe he wants to show us his glory. I believe he would love to shine his glory all over this place. As a matter of fact, in case you don't know it, his glory was here before you got here. Sometimes we just got to open our eyes and see it. Because he said in Isaiah that the whole earth is full of his glory. It don't matter where we are, church. God's glory is there. It don't matter what we're doing, God's glory's there. Hallelujah. We can't see God's glory because we're seeing everything else. We're seeing what's happening around us. The world's crumbling. The, oh, the, the, we're going we're gonna to fall. The United States is going down. We're not what we used to be. And, all, and I, I know all of that's there. But beyond all of that, God's glory is still there. Come on, seeing is running rapid, but his grace much more abounds. You see what I'm saying? So it keeps on just God is always on top of it. He's always got it in control. Now, I don't know about you, but I, I know God's getting ready, and, and I know you're ready for this God moment, but I'm, I'm, I'm going to just I'm gonna admit something to you tonight, okay? I've been guilty of this. None of you have. It's just me. Thinking in my mind, if I get a big-name preacher up, we can have a great revival. If I get somebody that's, that's preaching revival all across the country, and, and if we can get them in here, we can have an awesome revival. Man, if I can get this choir to come and get this place rocking and get people full, and if anything, we'll get a big crowd if we call, I don't know, I'm just thinking James Wilson or whatever his son's name is. And uh, some of you older folks don't even know him, but, but he'll draw a crowd. He can get, get people in here. And, I, and I'm guilty of that, thinking that's what's going to bring revival. Because we need somebody, you know, that can prophesy over you. I promise you, if I would have had a certain preachers here tonight, I would have had double or triple what we have here tonight. If I would have called in somebody that you liked or somebody that can prophesy over you, especially if they come in here and say, Woo, I see you're going to get a raise on your job. It might take you 20 years, but it's coming. Oh, I see you're going to get a brand new car coming your way. I, I was in a service one night. This guy looked at this uh, lady, and he was prophesying to her, and he says, and she's about 6'2", 6'3", and, and she's a bit tall lady. And he looks at her and he says, I see you in a car that's tight, but God's going to give you a bigger car that you got more leg room. Well, that, well you wouldn't want to tell a 6'2 lady that, and that would be a good testimony. And I hope she got her car, and I hope all that worked out. But I'm going to tell you, if it doesn't edify God and it doesn't edify the Word of God, you better run from it. Come on, because there are some people out there that, can, that knows how to read mail they, they have discernment. They can call things out, but does it mean it's of God? And we're going to talk about that, but people are searching for that, that kind of moment in their life. I'm going to go hear this guy preach. I'm not going to my church on Sunday, but I'm going to drive 100 miles to hear this guy preach. Come on, we have, y'all know we got prophet chasers? 
not like he used to. When I was growing up, I can remember my mom and dad, not, they wasn't in church on a regular basis, but when the certain prophet came close by within an hour or two drive, they would jump in a car and go because they want to hear what the prophet had to say. And people do that because they're looking for that moment. But this is the thing. How many moments have we missed thinking that it ain't here no more? Is it not here or is it you're not here? Is it not here or am I not here? Am I distancing myself from where it really is? It is in the house. Because I'm going to tell you, if you say God's not here like he used to be, then you're mistaken. Because he said where two or three are gathered together in my name, I'll be in the midst. He said, I don't need 500 people in a, in a uh, service on Wednesday night to have church. He don't. He don't even need Lee Stone King to bring a crowd. Come on, I can preach right there. We're looking for that person that's got it. But I'm going to tell you what God can do. He can use what you have. <laughs> Y'all look what you got stuck with to preach tonight, right? So he can use what he has, just like he did Moses. Moses had a staff. The very staff that Moses held in his hand became an extension of himself that revealed the power of the glory of God. But it was an extension of himself. That's what he had. We, don't, we, we may not have as much uh, uh, on our resume as somebody else has. And by the way, a lot of evangelists lie on their resume. Did y'all know that? And we still call them to preach. But we may not have as much on the resumes. We may not have as much. But you know what we do have? We have as much as God as they have. Amen. And we can claim that. And we can walk in that. But Moses had, and it was extension of his power or revealed power that he had for the glory of God. And the very day... His rod became a snake. That piece of wood changed that day when it became a snake. That first time he threw it on the ground. And that, I don't know about you guys, but I'm, I don't know if I can handle if, if my staff changed to a snake or not. I, I don't know. But when that, he threw it on the ground, and if you study it out, and some of you may know this, some of you may not, so I'll go ahead and tell you. Moses, God told him to throw it on the ground, and he did, and it turned to a snake. And, of course, the magicians did the same thing, and theirs turned to a snake. But, but Moses' snake ate up their snakes. And then the Lord told now this is where I would have had a problem. Probably me and the Lord, I would have had to say, you sure, God? Are you sure? When he told Moses, now pick it up by the tail. Now, I would have probably said, now, I, hey, Aaron, come over here, boy. You heard what God said. Pick that rod up. But that snake situation, but you know what? God turned it back into a rod. So you see what I'm saying tonight is God took that and that piece of wood changed that day and God used what Moses had. I come tonight to tell somebody, God wants to use what you got. You don't need a whole lot, just let God use what you got. He'll take that and he'll multiply it. He'll take that and do what no longer was this stick that Moses had just a stick, but rather it was a staff of God. That staff was used in a mighty ways to reveal the hand of God. In many ways, it became a snake in front of Pharaoh. And like I said, it swallowed up all the little snakes and all the things, like I said a moment. But he also stretched that sta staff over waters, and they become, turned to blood. In one place, they also departed. It stretched over the streams and the canals, and frogs began to jump around everywhere and invaded the, the camp. It struck the ground with gnats, and it came out, you know, just, just all kinds of stuff. Stretched out over the sky, and lightning began to be poured out, and, and rain poured down, hail poured down, and it, and it just kept on. And it pointed out to over Egypt, and the locusts came, devouring everything. And God told Moses to eat the Passover with the staff in his hand. And as the Israelites left the country of Egypt again, see, the staff, the, the staff was at work when they began to leave for Israel. It touched the waters, as I said, of the Red Sea, and it departed. It parted from hither to hither. So and then I want to read this in Exodus chapter 17 and 5, if you'll, if you'll pull that up. Thank you. 17 5. And the Lord said unto Moses, Go on before the people, and take with thee the elders of Israel, and thy what? Hey, don't forget your rod. You know, that part of your ministry. Don't forget. It's almost like going to preach without this, isn't it? No, oh, and by the way, don't forget your word. Don't forget your notes. Don't forget what I've told you to write down. He says, go take your rod, wherewith thou smotest the river, take in thine hand and go. Give me the next verse. Did I give it to you to read? Yeah, there it is. And behold, I will stand before there, thee there upon the rock in Horeb, and thou shalt smite the rock, and there shall come water out of it, that the 
people may drink. And Moses did so in the sight of the elders of Israel. Now notice he said, I will, you're going to smite the rock in this chapter. Now that place called Massa or, or Meribah that we talked about in our text today, but where he was at there was Massa, which, which is a contention struggle together in, in, a, in a opportunity or, or opposition. And then the other place that we in our text today was, was Meribah, and that place was called strife, bitter, conflict, and discord. And what they was here where they was at, the Lord told him what to do. So Moses, once again, using the staff, he took it and he began to perform a miracle by smiting the rock. Now, that's probably unheard of today, and, but we use oil. We lay oil on people's heads, and we use handkerchiefs, and we take that and anoint it. We pray over it and lay it on people's bodies. And, and I, have, I have been led by the Holy Ghost to, to lay my hand on a certain, like a shoulder or an elbow or somebody's feet. Somebody had feet problems, and I, I have got down man to man and woman to woman and prayed for people like that. And so, yes, we still have these objects that we use to pray for. But let me ask you today. Was the power in the staff or was, the, or was it in God who simply was using the staff to show the people his glory? It was in God. But, the, but it, yet still he was using Moses to see if old Moses was going to be obedient to do what he told him to do. How many knows obedience is very important? Now, there's a lot of men, now I can't speak for women, it's because I'm a man, because I know how men feel, but a lot of men don't like to be told what to do, especially from a man that's a preacher or a man that's, that's, that's a leader. They don't like to be told. They have authority problems. And that's where people are living today, because, but Moses was a man that said, okay, God, whatever you want. How often we make this mistake, we turn glory, we turn the glory on the object, like the staff, and I started to bring me one tonight to kind of give you that. But we, we turn the glory on the object and not the objective. You see, Moses, the staff, Moses and the staff really was just the objective that God used to work to, or the conduit. He was just, they was a conduit that God worked to work through. So we do this in the church today as well, particularly style services of preaching that we like. As a moment ago, as I said, sometimes we'll say, well, I really like it when old brother so-and-so preaches. I really like the fire that he has, and I like the way he spits out the word. And, but I'm going to tell you something. I, I'm, I'm going to really, I probably shouldn't say this, but I, and I say that every time. Then you say, well, you probably shouldn't, but y'all know how I am by now. But I'm going to tell you, you give me somebody that's just dedicated and faithful, I take that over a fireball preacher any day. I take it over somebody that can just quote every scripture out of the Bible. You give me somebody that's going to be there on a consistent basis and, and is cons consistently preaching the word of God, that's the preacher you need to stand behind. But we're not looking, but people look at that, and they, 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 they look at the object, and they say, look at that guy. Man, he's a fireball, or that sister. Man, she really brings it out. And we put a lots of glory on the object and not on the objective, the person that, that the, what we really should be looking at. Church, God's moments can't be held in objects. God moments can't be held in beautiful things that we try to build. You know, you can't do that. Or expression of styles. You can't have a certain style you like, and that's just what I like. I mean, some people, and I'm really going to bust some use bubbles right now. Some of you people just like certain preachers because he's cute or he's cool. He's a young guy. Oh, man, look at He's got the style. But don't, you need to stop looking at the outer appearance and start hearing the anointing of God. That's what you pull out of is that's the experience that you had to have. That's all right. Clap your hands. I can get a drink while you clap. God moments are just that. They're moments when your heart is connected with his awesome presence. And that, that's a God moment. That's just what it is. How, how, how God chooses to move in that moment is his choice. And what, the reason we miss a lot of God moments is because it ain't the way we want it to be and how we want it to be and when we want it to be. I want it to be like it's always been, Brother Hunt. I want it to be bring the house down on the first two songs. I want to have two altar. I like what somebody told me the other day. We were talking in a conversation, and it just hit me. He says, yeah, you know, the other day on the second altar call, 
because we have two altar calls right here, and you know, but but that's awesome. But you know, he he said, and I, I thought, well, look at there, we we do have times to pray, but those are the opportunities, and those are the those are the moments that we have at that time to receive. But but today, what I'm trying to tell you, God chooses to move in a moment the way He wants to move, not the way we wanted to move. And I've seen many people try to get God to move in their way, and I've been guilty of it, and so have you. If God don't move, we'll make it move. If we can't feel God, we're going to put some smoke on the stage and get the bass rumbling behind it. We're going to make, make our own spirit move. We're going to put some strange fire in here. So they do it. But God demands our attention. One way or the other, God's going to get our attention. Numbers chapter 20 was our text today that we read in through 7 through 13. I want you to notice the instructions that the Lord gave. Now, we found out, that we just found out in that text, he told him to smite the rock. So, but listen to what instructions he gave Moses in this text here that we read tonight. He, I want you to notice. He said, I want you to take the staff. Everybody said, that's action. You go and you take the staff. You got to do something. Church, I'm going to tell you, if you're going to get anywhere with God, you're going to have to do something. You're going to have to have some action. You're going to have to move from your feet, I mean, to, from your seat to your feet. And you're going to have to show God somehow or another i got to have some. Now, wait a minute, Brother Hunt. God moved on them in the book of Acts where they were sitting. Yes, and God can do it here tonight. But they, they didn't stay in their seats when the Holy Ghost got a hold of them. So if you're going to stay in your seat here at a while, you're going to get out in the streets and act like drunk men because they did too. But watch this. He, so he they had action. Then he told him, he says, in our text, now the last text in Acts, he told him to smite the rock. But in our text, he told him, he says, I want you to go and speak to the rock. He had to have some expression. Now, y'all, y'all don't know from where I'm standing, but some of you scare me when I look out and I see your expression sometimes. <laughs> I thought, whoa, what is wrong with them? Did I say something wrong? And I think, wow. But, but that's why I change my expression all the time. I, you know, I may preach like this. I, may, I want y'all not to be staring. I, I'll be honest with you. Now, if you're like this, it's just between you and God. But I cannot get into preaching that is like this, and it changes not a beat. And turn your Bibles to Acts chapter 2, and let's read verse 38. Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized unto you. And all, I, I just can't get into that preaching, but you give me some expression with it. When I holler and I make you jump, that's what I like to do. When I see you about to go to sleep, I like to say, Wake up! Now, I know it sounds smart to get just to be, have a monotone or just, just have a steady little voice, and, but I don't know about you, but I, I, I want to know that what I'm feeling is, 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 is I'm feeling it while I'm preaching it. Praise God. So he told us, I want you to go out, Moses, and I want you to express yourself, and I want you to speak to that rock. And instead of Moses obeying what God said, Moses looked, he said, I tell you, I, I know what to do. I've done this before. So Moses, in his defense, so let, let me just take up for Moses. We know Moses smote the rock, but let me just take up for Moses a little bit. He did what he always has done. And apostolics, I think that's where our problem is today, is we keep doing what we've always done. Even though God said he's going to do a new thing, even though he said in the last day I'm going to pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Did you know all flesh means everybody? Did you know that? That means everybody that's willing to say, here it is. Everybody. doesn't matter what nationality. It doesn't matter what your background. It don't matter if you've had five wives and the one you got now is not your man. don't matter. Oh, it does, my brother. Oh, no, it don't. God don't look at people's disgusting lifestyles and say, I'm not never going to use him. I mean, think about it. How would you like to have a resume for Moses to be your pastor? Y'all remember that years ago I read that resume? Would y'all like to have this guy as your pastor? And y'all said no because I told you he killed a man and he, 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 uh, he disobeyed God and all this is in his resume. And I said, well, y'all just told you you don't want Moses as your pastor. But see, God used a man like that. God can use these kind of people. But Moses in his defense did what he had always done. And you know what? It worked before, so why don't it work now? He's had some 40 years of practice with this staff, this rod. This staff has never been too far from him. I mean, why not smite the rock? Why not go ahead and smite it? He strikes the rock two times. And don't miss this. Watch this. Don't miss this now. And God honored it, Moses, by bringing water out of the rock. I ain't never understood that. Why did water come out of the rock? 
it worked before. God honored what Moses did. Even though he disobeyed him and smote the rock, God went on and honored, and guess what? All the people drank the water. Everybody got their thirst filled. A lot of times we come to church and we get our thirst filled, but we're thirsty before we get home again. We got problems before we get home again. We never got what we really, the, 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 the satisfaction that we really need, needed at that service. But he certainly was not pleased because Moses had disobeyed him. And church, I'm just going to say, just because God may honor us and, see we, and we see results from his hand does not mean that he's pleased with us. I'm going to say these two next paragraphs real slow because this, this, this is a, a something God gave me years ago, and I want to show you something. Just because God may honor us and we see results from his hand does not mean that he is pleased with us. It doesn't mean he's pleased. Watch this. We should never mistake the blessings of the Lord for the approval of the Lord. And how often have we done that? God really likes me. Look what I did. I must have approval, but I'm going to tell you that is always a mistake. To think because blessings are flowing your way, it, you must be approved by God. Like saying, it would be like me saying, you know, or the, the children of Israel saying, we must be in God's will. We get fresh manna every day, fall right into our yard. Every day. We must be in God's will. But you know, the children of Israel were one of the most negative complaining people that's written about in the Word of God complained about having fresh manna, complained about having to be in the wilderness, complained we were better off in Egypt. At least we got three meals a day, had a roof above our head, and we didn't have to take down the temple and rebuild it every time. But they were the worst complaining people in the whole word of God. But yet and still, some of them still made it into the promised land. A lot of them died. A lot of the complainers, God just took them out. I don't know about you, but I'd be scared to complain about the church. I would be scared to complain about the church. Because God might just take you out. You want to complain now? Go ahead and complain. God might just get rid of you. I, I don't want to. You know what I want to do? I want to, I want to say it like this. I'm glad to be a part of a church that God says that the gates of hell shall not prevail against. Amen. I'm glad to be a part of a body of Christ that loves God and they're fighting with everything they got. Praise God. You know why I know you're fighting? Because you keep coming back. You keep coming anyway. You might get down, but I'm getting back up, coming again. I might be sick, but I ain't a stopping. Let me get better, Brother Hunt. I'll be right back. God's going to help me fight this thing. We're going to keep coming. How do, you know what? Winners keep coming. Winners keep going to the gym. Winners keep going to the church house. Winners keep praying. Winners keep fasting. Winners keep worshiping God. Yes, you got to keep it going. Praise God. I want you to notice what Moses and Aaron did. They disobeyed, and neither one of them got to make it, and they weren't allowed to enter into the promised land because they disobeyed. Think of, think of this. Now, I don't want you to know, I want you to know this, but, but I want you to just, just hear me out first. Think of all the things that they done. Really, and, and when, I, when I thought about Moses and Aaron, I thought, man, it, was it really fair? Look what they done. Do y'all know we live in a, in a fair society? Everybody wants it fair. And, and, and we want to be fair, right? We want everything fair. But I don't, and that's what I thought about Moses. I said it wasn't fair. He stood before Pharaoh. He led the people. He heard from God face to face. He led the people into worship. He fell on his face before God, and he listened for instructions from the Lord. Even though he had complainers and, you know, upset at him. And I mean, think about it. The man went to a mountain and prayed for 40 days and 40 nights. And while he's gone, the church decided to go, go charismatic. Pretty much went charismatic, melted all their gold, made their own God. Moses is gone. Moses comes back. Moses, he, he, he threw down the Ten Commandments, upset. What are you guys doing? Can't I leave you just for 40 days and 40 nights? But Moses did all of that, and yet they were all going, uh, they were all going to uh, not be allowed to enter to the promised land, him and Aaron, because of his failures, his mistakes, all because he did not do it the way God said. Doing things the way God says is important. Church, we're not, we're, we're not to ever do it our own way. It'll get you in trouble. How many knows your way will get you in trouble? Oh, it looks good. I've done it before, Brother Honey, and it worked last time. It doesn't mean it's going to work in 2021. 
doesn't mean it's going to be that way all the time. Now, I'm not saying we're going to change what we preach out of the Word. I'm not changing that. I've got people try to get me to change it. I've got people that have left our church because I wouldn't change what the Word of God says. And I'm not changing the Word of God. I'm not going to go against this Bible. Even if it hair lifts the devil, as they say, I'm not going to do it. But church, we can't do it our way. Or even do it the way that it has always been done before. Sometimes you just can't do it that way. Methods have to change. Too many of us are like Moses. God, you know, what God is saying, do it this way. And we keep saying, but it worked this way last time. I felt more comfortable in, in this way last time. You know, we all get comfortable in our comfort, comfort zone. Did y'all know that? And we got a certain way we like things, certain way we like to do it. And, you know, it's amazing how we can get inside the sanctuary. We can be almost dead. We could be like, I've seen, I've seen kids and when, when I'm preaching sometimes, they're like, and after church, man, they can run 100 mile an hour around the church. Woo, woo, woo. Everybody gets live at closing time. But, you know, it's always where we are. And it, it, it's always the way we've done it before. There will be people who really are good people. There will be a lot of people who have done really good things. And they're going to stand before God someday, but if they don't have their mind made up with Jesus Christ and doing it the way the Lord tells them to do it, it doesn't matter if you, he told you to do it 100 years ago. If you're not doing what he tells you to do now, my friend, you're not going to, and you're not going to be able to see him. You're not going to be able to make it in that promised land. You know, a lot of people cho has chosen their, their own fate today. They chose their own way, their own direction. It's just the way it's going to be. But let me ask you tonight. What are you putting your trust in tonight? What are you putting your trust in? What, what are you depending on getting when you come to the house of God? When you walk into this sanctuary tonight, what are you depending on happening tonight? I'm going to tell you if, if you, if you don't have your trust in God, you're messing up. The only way I can make it, I mean, I, I shop every day. I'm having somewhere every day doing something, making sure everything's in order and everything's happening. I don't know what I'm facing. I don't know where I'm going. And, and, and yes, I carry, I carry a pistol when I go places. And, yes, Brother Hunter, you, you don't trust people or you're not trusting. No, I trust God, and, and God's got me. But, but if I need to uh, throw a 238 at him, I will do that too, praise God. Because I believe God's going to help me get a, a, a good aim at him, praise the Lord. But your relationship with God is going to have to be fresh. I'm going to talk about that before I close tonight. I'm getting ready. To, I'm at the end of my notes already. But listen, if you don't have a fresh anointing of God on a continuously basis, it's almost like food, guys. Food, eventually, you've got to throw the spaghetti out of the refrigerator. Because if you don't, it starts growing this green stuff on top of it. Y'all know what I'm talking about? Spaghetti don't, ain't going to last two weeks. I'm sorry, guys. You've got to get it out of that fridge. You've got to heat it up the next day or two and get it gone. But, but you know, sometimes anybody ever besides me ever, I'm going to eat this later, and it ends up being in the refrigerator for two weeks, and you go, oh, God, what is that? And growed in that thing. But you know what? That's what happens to our spiritual life, too. Our spiritual life has got to be refreshed on a daily basis. Every day I need to contact God. I need to get a fresh anointing. I've got to have, uh, I gotta have a fresh moment with God. You know, in our relationship with, our, with God, it's got to be fresh or, or we, we're going to be counting on tradition to get us through it if you don't have that fresh anointing. You're going to be counting on the same old, same old to get you through it. And, and guess what? It ain't going to happen. It ain't going to get you through it. But tradition of the past is not going to carry you into the future. Let me say it again. The tradition of the past is not going to carry you into the future. You're going to have to sometimes get away from tradition and get into what God is saying, this is what I want to happen. Church, we need, we need a fresh anointing every service. Every, everybody say every service. Every service, you need a fresh anointing. I'm not saying you're going to run around the church and shout and jump pews every, every service. No, I'm talking about somehow or another, i got to have that moment with God. Every service matters. And, and you see, I'm a pastor. And, I, and, yes, I believe church is a necessary thing. I believe church is a must thing. I believe you have to have church. I don't care what the devil is trying to throw out in the last two years. You're not going to make it to heaven without church. Well, yes, you can. You can, but you ain't. Because none of you are going to get that fresh anointing that you need sitting at home every day, day in, day out. Oh, you're going to have a prayer meeting. You've got a prayer closet. You've got a place, uh, but you know, the moments that you have had in this building don't come sitting in your recliner at home. 
The moments that you've had, I'm going to ask you. Y'all remember, some of you may have. My, my mother-in-law did. She got the Holy Ghost by her bed at home. She went to church that morning, and the preacher preached about the Holy Ghost, and, and she didn't go to the altar. She was a Baptist up until that day. She went home. She said, God, if that Holy Ghost is real, give it to me. And God filled her with the Holy Ghost. Uh, but you know what? From that day forward, every time she went to church, she got filled with the Holy Ghost. She got filled with the Holy Ghost every day. I mean, it wasn't a service go by. It seemed like she didn't get filled with the Holy Ghost. I come tonight to tell you. Are you looking? When you come to church, are you looking for a God moment every service? I believe David was because he said, I was, I was glad when they sent unto me, let me go into the house of the Lord. David went to a place. I was glad when they said, let us go. He went to a place to worship God, and he went in. And he went for a God moment. I'm going to receive. I'm not going tonight because I, wanna, I want to see what everybody's looked like and everybody's here. And I'm not going here to please nobody tonight. But I'm going tonight because I know when I get there, God is going to be in the house. And tonight, if you're here tonight, you're looking for a God moment. And you want to experience that tonight. We're going to open this altar in a minute if music could get ready and come tonight. But the altar call... It's not going to be for everybody tonight. I understand. Why do you say that, Brother Hunt? Because everybody's not searching for a God moment. You know how I know? Because I've got to get home. I've got to get up early. I've got to work tomorrow. I've got, I've got to, I hadn't had dinner yet, Brother Hunt. I've got to go eat dinner. I've got to go out and eat with somebody. I've got a meeting after church. I've got to take care of this. Well, I just don't like what you said, so I don't want that. Whatever the moment is that you're going to make you miss it, Think about it. We can name them all night long reasons and excuses why I can't enjoy that God moment. So really and truly, it's probably not going to be for everybody. But who here tonight would like to have a God moment tonight before you leave? Would you stand with me? You can get it at the altar. You can get it in your seat. You can get it in the hallway. If you're in the hallway tonight standing, and I'm going to keep rebuking those who walk the hallways after church, I'm going to keep doing it until I die because you're missing a God moment when you got a conversation going on in the hallway instead of being inside the church. That God is in the house. He said, where two or three are gathered together, I'm going to be in the midst. So if you want a God moment tonight while you're standing, I don't want you to leave until you have touched the hem of God's garment or you have prayed with somebody. Maybe you don't need a God moment. Maybe you're just all right. Maybe you need to help somebody else pray tonight. God, fill them with the Holy Ghost. But I want you to come around this front if you don't mind. If you want a God moment, come on around the front. Don't miss what God has, God, this moment that God can do. My first message I ever preached was a lost opportunity. And I want to preach tonight to tell you, don't lose this opportunity. This moment that God can pour out. I don't have a staff like Moses had and hold over your head and all your troubles is going to, go from side to side. No, but I have a God that has power. That everything that has you distracted, everything that has you bound can be released out of your body right now. In the name of Jesus, God, I pray for this church tonight. I pray for these that are standing in this altar that have made up their mind. I'm not quitting. I'm not backing down. I got to have a moment. I got to have a God moment in my life. I got to have a touch tonight. Lord, I can't leave this place tonight until until I've had that moment with you, oh God, that everything's going to be all right. You're going to help me, Lord, before I wake up in the morning. God, you're going to be with me, God. My strength's going to be there on Thursday as I wake up, God, because I'm going to have a moment with you tonight. I'm not re relying on anything else tonight, church. Right now, I'm not relying on anything but you, oh God. And God, we're, we're going to say it like Moses. If you don't want to, you don't go with us, we don't want to go. We want to go everywhere you go, oh God. Walk with us, oh Lord. Talk with us, oh God. Commune with us tonight, God. Oh, God, you're in this house. Surely your presence is here, God. We're trusting you, God, that we're going to make it, God. We're going to go through the other side. You said to go. We're going to go. <laughs> yes, Lord. Come on, that's it. Just lay your head on somebody's shoulder beside you. Let's pray for each other, God. We love you. 
We praise your name, Jesus, God. We're ready, Lord. We want you, Lord. We need you, God, in the name of Jesus. Sing it. Touch of heavenly fire, oh fresh anointing. 